Right, okay. Um, there's one more thing I want to do in this class, which is going to be useful for the worksheets, which we're going to look at on Tuesday, and that's proving some nice equations you can get from this relativistic momentum. Okay. So, moment. Okay, so first of all, just a bit of notation. So I've already said that the time component of momentum should be interpreted as the total energy divided by C. So I'll use E to represent this total energy of the, the particle or the body. Okay. The three components, so the three space components of momentum, Px, Py, Pz, I will just write as the vector p with a single arrow, there's one arrow to distinguish it from the four momentum with two arrows, um, and I will, finally, I will set the number p as being equal to the length of the vector, the three vector p. Okay. So these, this corresponds with the Newtonian definition of momentum, these two, right? Okay. Then you can prove the following two equations, so they say will be useful next time. E squared is equal to P squared C squared plus M squared C to the four. That's the first equation. Call that number one. The second equation is E is equal to P times C squared divided by V. So these are not hard to prove, so let me just quickly prove them for you now. You basically just have to substitute it into the formula and then check it works. Okay. So, proof of number one, p squared c squared plus m squared c to the four. What's this? Well, p squared means px squared plus y squared plus pz squared, c squared m squared c to the 4. Okay, and now we use the definition here. So, for example, I can take out the common factor of m squared c squared over 1 minus b squared over c squared. Right, so this factor comes from here, this squared. And then inside, you've just got vx squared plus v y squared plus v z squared. Okay. Is that clear what I've done here? I've just substituted px, p y, p z. The formula's here. px, p y, p z. Okay. And then again, plus m squared c to the 4. But this is equal to m squared c squared over 1 minus b squared over c squared. I'll put everything into a common factor. So here you have v squared. And here you have plus 1 minus b squared over c squared times c squared. Okay, so this term becomes that, that's that. And you see that the v's cancel, right? So this v squared here is going to cancel that v squared there. Right? So this comes out as being m squared c to the fourth over 1 minus v squared over c squared. But then from the time component of momentum here, this is just equal to pt squared times c squared, p squared, c squared, and that was the definition of e, which is e squared. Okay. So that's, that's the end, right? So we've proved that p squared c squared plus m squared c to the fourth is e squared. 
Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is even easier. E, oh, wait, okay, we'll do it the other way. PC squared over V, this is equal to M over square root 1 minus V squared over C squared V times V times the length of the vector V times C squared over V. But the length of the vector V is just what I've called the, the number V here. So this cancels that. And then this is just MC squared. So 1 minus c squared over c squared, which is pt times c, which is e. So that one works too. Okay, so we've proved that these two equations are true for any observer. Okay? Um, note that this one has a nice interpretation in terms of Pythagoras there, right? So you can interpret this as representing a triangle where the hypotenuse of the triangle is the energy of the particle, the one side of the triangle is the mass, or mc squared. So the, this is called the mass energy. Of the energy associated with the mass of the particle, and then the other one is PC, associated with the momentum. So if, if you have a visual kind of memory, then you know you can remember that picture instead of that equation, if you want. Right. An interesting consequence of these two equations is that you, in special relativity, you can have particles which have zero mass but still carry kinetic energy and, and momentum. Okay. Um, in Newtonian physics, you have these equations, right? Momentum is mass times velocity and kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So if the particle is massless, it has zero momentum and zero kinetic energy, right? Um, but the same thing is not true always in general relativity. Let me briefly write about that now. So in Newtonian physics, Um, massless particles cannot carry momentum or kinetic energy. But in special relativity, what do we have? Relativity. So we can use these two equations, okay? So if we put m equals zero into these two equations, the first one tells you if m equals zero, then equation one just tells you that E is equal to PC. Okay? If m is zero, you get that, you can take the square root. So that means that there's a simple relationship between the momentum a zero mass particle can carry and the energy it has. Okay? And the second thing then from here implies that E is equal to PC squared over V. But then P times C is just E. So this is equal to E times C over V. 
but then you can cancel the e's. So this means that 1 is equal to c over v, which means that v equals c. That means that the particle must travel at the speed of light. Okay? So in special relativity, zero mass particles can exist. They can carry energy and momentum related by this equation, but they must travel at the speed of light. Carry momentum, energy, related by e equals to c, but they must travel at the speed of light. That's another interesting prediction of the theory. First of all, they must travel at the speed of light, and then this relation to here. Okay. Um, and this is not academic, because as we'll see when we talk about quantum mechanics and particle physics, such particles do exist. Okay. So there are particles which do have zero mass. There's quite a few of them. Okay, and indeed, they do satisfy this relation, and they do travel at the speed of light. Okay. So the most well-known of these, which you may have heard about before, are the particles of light, which are called photons. Okay. So in quantum mechanics, light itself is, is a particle or a quantum field, um, and these particles are known as photons. The excitation of the fields are known as photons. And they do satisfy these 